Glad to have you with us here on the program. Of course, this is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, joined by Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. And we're so happy to have you with us as we want to talk to you today about the changing landscape of retirement and retirement planning. Now, Kirk and Michael, they're with the Retirement Education Foundation, and you can learn a lot more. And I want to encourage you to go to Facebook and follow them. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation. You can find out what they're doing right here in our community, including the courses that they teach at local universities. They do that virtually. You can sign up and get registered. So stay tuned. We're going to have ways that you can do that so you can be ready for retirement in this new and changing landscape. And it really is different these days, isn't it? I feel like it's almost Kirk out with the old and in with the new, right? Well, yeah, we have a we have an unusual environment. And I know we talk about this about every show now, but the low interest rate environment, the sustained low interest rate environment that we have is really a war on seniors and savers. It's really destroying all the conventional approaches to retirement planning that our industry has been using and continues to use. And I think what we're going to talk about, Michael, today is how our industry is pivoting with the low interest rate environment. And the pivot is, quite frankly, really dangerous. It continues to be a lazy approach to a very difficult, complicated period of time in retirement. It's complicated. It's it's really not the growth of your money anymore. It's not the growth of your investments. It's your income planning strategies and reducing volatility. And, and you know, Michael, we have had a low interest rate environment. We're really, if we look at interest rates, the 10-year treasury, we're at historical lows. uh, Give us a history lesson of if we lent money to the U.S. government for 10 years, what kind of return did we typically get? So since 1976, the average 10-year yield was about 6.2%, meaning if you lend them your money, they'll give you about 6.2% per year in income as your yield. Today, that yields about 0.6, maybe 0.7%. So about one-tenth of the average. So, Michael, so one-tenth the average, and it's been this way for a little while now, right? And and uh, the Fed just announced they're intending to keep interest rates low for how long? I mean, they're targeting out until 2025 or so, but who knows? It could be longer than that. You never know. So this has created a real huge challenge for our industry, right? Because I think most of our listeners are now familiar and they've heard, they've read, no matter what retirement book you pick up, everyone references this 60, 4% rule playbook, right? In the 60, 40, 4% rule playbook is a sort of a one size fits all. What they say is if we take your money, invest 60% of it in stocks, 40% of it in bonds, If you're 65 years old, you can take out 4% a year for the rest of your life, and there's your retirement plan, Mr. and Mrs. Retiree, baby boomer, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge is when you have 40% of your money in bonds that are paying one-tenth of the historical average, that impacts all of the modeling and backtesting to determine a probability of success. See, everything in our industry, most of the people that are helping Uh, the baby boomers retire right now are using the same software. It's called Monte Carlo. It's a Monte Carlo simulation, which they're basically taking every return that sequence of return that we experienced over the last hundred years. And they've modeled out. If I put 60 in stocks, 40% in bonds and took out 4%, how many times would we fail? And what they found, Michael, is that historically speaking, that they would fail just about 10% of the time. Today, with the low interest rate environment we've been in for a while, for the last three years, the fail rate is almost 25%. In fact, it's over 25% now. Yes, yes, it is. So the new rule is 2.5%. And we're going to talk about this today and where our industry is pivoting and how dangerous this is. But at the end of the day, this is why we started this nonprofit organization that's teaching these courses, these seven-hour courses at all the major universities. The Retirement Education Foundation teaches seven-hour courses at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State University, Oakland University, and right here in our learning center in Livonia. And we are now streaming these live. It's a $29 donation to the charity, and you get to attend a seven-hour course on how to construct your own plan for retirement, when and how to take income from where so that you don't outlive your money. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. 
Great to be here with Kurt Cassidy and, of course, Michael Mazarin. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. You know, guys, we were talking about this changing, evolving landscape of retirement. Let's discuss what we're going to talk about today here on the show. So what we're going to talk about is how the industry is pivoting. They're, they're now promoting what we call a 75-25 allocation. And what that means to you, if we had a 2008 event, how much you would lose? How does that impact your performance? And why are they pivoting to this as opposed to doing comprehensive income planning so that you could take out a greater payout percentage to live on? So you could take out bigger withdrawals from your money with a lesser chance of outliving your money if we, we would just take a more... Um, sophisticated approach than as opposed to a one size fits all michael yeah like you said i mean the approach has been shifting from a 60 40 model 60 stocks 40 percent fixed income to taking on more stock risk to compensate for the lower yields now people don't realize maybe they will at some point that when we have drawdowns in the market they're going to feel much more pain than they felt with a 60 40 portfolio Drawdown meaning when when we have volatility, when we have a 2008 event, when we have a COVID event, when we have a dot com event. Anytime we have a market draw uh, event where we're in a recession, depression, the market's falling, a 75 percent allocation to stocks, 25 allocation to fixed income is going to lose more money. And the challenge is once you're retired, your relationship with money changes. You are more emotional. You have more fear and anxiety. You're worried about outliving your money. So, and we see it statistically across the board where people over the age of 65 panic much more frequently when we have market events. In fact, during COVID, I think 30% of people over the age of 65 panicked and went to cash at the bottom, which is exactly the wrong plan. But yet this is the, the strategy our industry is pivoting so that they can pass their back testing so they can show that their probability of not outliving your money isn't as, uh, as bad as it would be if you had a 60, 40 allocation. So again, we teach these seven hour courses at all the major universities to help people figure out how to construct their own retirement plan. It's $29 to attend a seven hour course taught at all the major universities and we're streaming it live. If you'd like to register, Go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Michael when the Retirement Education Hour continues. We're glad you're along with us here for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak with Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. You can find them on Facebook. Just search Retirement Education Foundation. And if you'd like to get registered for their courses, these are held all around our community and virtually. You can register today. Two easy ways. Call 800 240 8981, or you can go online and register retirementplanningedu.com. We've been talking about the changing landscape of retirement. And, you know, I think back, Kirk and Michael, to some of the old rules of thumb, right? I mean, don't eat before you swim. I can remember my grandmother <laughs> making me sit out of the pool for an hour after I had lunch. Um, or that old rule, what is it? Starve a fever, feed a coal, or maybe it's reverse. I don't know. All these old wives tales or, or old rules of thumb. You guys remember some of those that we used to live by? Of course. Of course. Our Your industry made you full sit of- out too, didn't she, Kirk? <laughs> she did. My mom did too. Yeah. <laughs> Now, dad, on the other hand, had a difference of, of opinion, but <laughs> he threw um, you in the deep end, right? <laughs> he did. Actually, that's exactly how I learned to swim. When I was very young, my father threw me in the deep end of our pool and said, go, good luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> mom was pretty upset. I got to tell you is what I hear. I don't remember any of this, <laughs> maybe because he, because <laughs> I'm scorned, but, um, yeah. right. But, uh, there, there's so many of these rules that our industry uh, still promotes and, and they're still using and I'm, you know, we worry about this. I mean, we talk about this regularly in our, our classes. And candidly, Megan, it's why we started this nonprofit organization over 10 years ago to help. Really, it, it started with basic financial literacy. And it's evolved into how do we more effectively plan for retirement? Where are the traps? How do we construct a comprehensive plan that is custom specific to your own situation? 
And of course, over years, it's evolved and it's gotten pretty advanced. Honestly, it's we get into really specific tax planning strategies and and really what are the components to making a decision on when and how to take Social Security? Because it's not it's not the calculator our our industry keeps talking about. There are customized solutions for everybody. You don't have to buy that one size fits all. And if frankly, if you have resources, you shouldn't use the these conventional wisdom strategies are really designed for people who are barely going to make it by in retirement. You know, it's kind of like the the old rule that when you retire, you'll need less money. Well, we know that's not true. It's true because it's true for those people that don't have the resources to spend more money. But those people who have resources, who have saved for retirement, the statistics show that 66% of the people in the first five years of retirement are going to spend more money than they spent the last five years they were working. So you're going to spend more money if you have the resources. The problem is these general rules come from taking a look at the whole general public and say, okay, how do all of these people as a whole, what's the average of all of them? And I think some people forget to realize that a third of retirees are primarily only living on Social Security. That's it. So that really skews all these general rules, skews all the data in terms of what you need to live on, how much you can afford to take out of your accounts, what order to take money out of IRAs, non-IRAs, Social Security. All of these general rules that our industry still promotes and uses, it really doesn't apply to the two-thirds of people who have resources and have their own unique challenges, Michael. Yeah, I mean, it's been difficult for people because, like you said— this initial 4% rule based on the 60-40 portfolio is essentially built on a back test of 4% is a sustainable draw rate. So you can take 4% from your portfolio per year in retirement with a 60-40 portfolio. And based on historical averages, you should be okay. But with the changing landscape in retirement, like we're talking about, that's no longer the case anymore. They apply across the board, all those rules. And, and I think at the core of the problem Michael, is we have an industry that is about scale. They're about um, the bottom line, making money. Look, we're all wanting to make money. We get it. But in any business, related to your own business that you you all, you, you listeners, wherever you work, there everyone's trying to create efficiencies, right? So that they can be more productive, get more done, make more profits. That's what everyone's trying to do. And our industry is very powerful. They're great at messaging. They understand the psychology of the investor. And as a result, they've leveraged and manipulated the psychology into making it the most profitable business model they can for them, which is simple solutions, transactional. They want to meet as many as you as they possibly can and move on to the next person instead of a comprehensive individualized plan for each individual person. As a result, they keep they're forced to come up with these solutions that fit the current economic landscape to support that transactional business model they've created. And that's what we have right now with this old 60-40 playbook. It's really dead. I mean, Google 60-40 retirement plan. And what you're going to find is a lot of articles telling you it no longer will work. It fails all of the backtesting. It fails all of the backtesting to the tune of almost 30% of the time now. So the new rule is you could take out about 2.5%. About two and a half to three percent per year. So that means if you save a million dollars, what you what what your advisor is going to tell you is you can afford to take. And you're 65 years old, you can take out 25 to 30 thousand dollars a year on your million dollars. There's no way you're going to replace the income and the lifestyle you've been accustomed to while you were working in retirement based upon that withdrawal rate. That is a problem. So as a result, Michael, our industry is forcing people into taking more risk. This is the new message you're going to constantly hear. Evolve, shift, allocate more money into stocks, more, less into bonds, because frankly, you're not going to make much money in bonds over the next 10 to 20 years. That's fact. And maybe we visit that next segment. Why aren't people going to make money in bonds? And what is this change? What does that mean if we have 75% of our money in stocks and 25% of our money in bonds? Why did they do it? And what does that mean to retirees? I think we need to revisit all of this and explain why in the next 20, 10 to 20 years, bonds just, you're not going to make money. So that's why our industry is pivoting. That's why it's never more important now 
than ever to attend. Remember, we are a nonprofit organization teaching people how to avoid traps and avoid running out of money in retirement. We've been doing this for over 10 years at all the major universities. We survive on the $29 donation that you make to the charity. In return, you get a seven hours of education, a 200-page textbook, and this is a comprehensive course. Look, you need to be prepared to learn. This is this class moves fast. We get technical. By the time you're done, you are going to be able to construct your own retirement plan. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back. There's much more Retirement Education Hour with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. It's great to be here with Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. Follow them on Facebook. Just search Retirement Education Foundation so you can be in the know with everything they're doing to help you get retirement ready. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're talking about some of the big changes that you may have noticed as you're trying to plan for retirement. If you've been doing that on your own, trying to set a plan for retirement, rest assured, Michael, Kirk, the team, they're ready to help you. You don't have to make it a DIY project. You can get that that help you need to give you the confidence that's necessary to really look forward to retirement, to enjoy it. We've been discussing, Kirk and Michael, how there is this shift, especially in the retirement planning industry, on how to invest and also how much you can take out of your savings to support yourself in retirement. Let's face it, retirement's all about income, right? Why, Kirk, is the number one fear that Americans have about retirement, why is it running out of money? Well, you know, I think it's because who wants to lose their independence? You run out of money, you, you become dependent on somebody else, whether it's the government, your children, often your children. And speaking from experience, right, I, I've got parents. It's one of the reasons why I got in this business is they, they had a lot of poor advice over their lifetime. But forget the advice. They also made a lot of bad choices. I mean, let's hold them accountable. My parents should have made better choices. By the time I was 18 years old, my parents went from upper middle class to bankrupt three times by the time I was 18 years old. So, And, and they're both going to die with no money. My father passed away, no money. We were helping them. Mom is, is you know, quite dependent on her children right now to be able to maintain our lifestyle. And, you know, no matter how hard we try, you know, the, the, the roles reverse, right? As you age, your children almost become the parent. <laughs> it, it's what happens. Think about those of you who are taking care of a parent right now that are that's aging. You're holding them accountable, making sure they're taking their medicine, they're eating, they're taking care of themselves that they're not overspending, they're being responsible with their money. You're becoming a parent for your parents, right? And so the longer you can take care of yourself with your own money, the more you, longer you have independence. And, uh, you know, it's got to be hard. I, I know that we, we really try, but I know my sister. <laughs> my sister is always checking mom's checkbook and balances and making sure she's paying her bills and making sure she's going to the doctors and eating right and exercising and Mom's lost a lot of her independence, and uh, it's it can't be easy for her. Uh, I know she's appreciative of us to help, but um, I think if if someone could have gotten to them earlier and given them better advice and showed them how to build their own retirement plan, I think they'd had a much different outcome. And so, I, I mean, I, look at the end of the day, I understand why our industry has to come up with simplified solutions to be able to provide the masses a plan for retirement. I get it. There isn't that many people that have the advanced technical ability with taxes, investments, income planning to be able to help the majority of the people. But you listeners have an opportunity to get access to a team of professionals, CPAs, attorneys, and advisors who's going to teach you the, the technical aspects of retirement planning. And it's different. It's not accumulating wealth anymore. I know many of you think the investments you choose will determine whether you outlive your money or not. I don't know if I'll be able to convince you on the radio in an eight minute segment, but please hear us when we tell you that isn't going to determine whether you outlive your money or not. The investments you choose will not be the number one factor. It'll be a factor, but not the number one. 
The number one factor is your income planning, knowing where to take your income from and when. And this is why I'm so scared for retirees, baby boomers right now with our industry pivoting to a more aggressive allocation for retirement planning. And they're only doing it because when they back test the conventional 60% stocks, 40% bonds, it fails. It fails almost 30% of the times, but it doesn't fail 30% 30% of the time if they go and backtest 75% stocks, 25% bonds. But Michael, the problem is with that is volatility. If you have a 75% stock, 25% bond portfolio, if we have a 2008 event, how much are they going to lose? In a 2008 event with a 75-25 portfolio, they lose about 45%. Yeah, yeah. Now, we saw in March a 34% loss in the market. Yep. And we saw roughly 30 to 33% of people at Fidelity over, over the age of 65 go to cash. Panicked. They panicked. And that was with a, a 34% loss in the market. Now mm-hmm. envision a 45% loss in their portfolio. Michael, I think we're setting retirees up, the baby boomers up for failure. I really do. Just so that on the computer screen, they can give you a sheet with a dial that says you are likely to not outlive your money. Well, okay. So there's something more in retirement than the way you allocate your money because there's emotions. And look, there's a stereotype that old people are cheap, right? Forever. Think about grandma and grandpa. They were cheap. No, they weren't cheap. They were scared. The first cognitive ability we begin to lose as we age is mathematics. Our ability to calculate mathematics, keep track of things, order. It's them unable to connect the dots is why they stop spending money. And so because of fear, now what happens when they see their, their portfolios swinging 10, 13% in a day, they're going to just say, get me out of this. And by the way, that is the worst thing you can do. Those people who panicked missed the best 50 days in history following the COVID crash. They missed it. Those people are going to outlive their money. They can't survive that. And that's the concern really. I mean, you saw how upset I was when, when this first started coming out, when we first started yeah, hearing prominent voices in the industry saying, the new playbook is 75-25. Because Susie Orman, Ramsey, I mean... Jeremy Siegel. The, 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 those that retirees are listening to, right? Because they're convincing these retirees to take more risk, and they don't realize the risk they're taking. And once this, we have a market correction and they panic, now they've done permanent damage to their retirement. There's two things. There's one, something that you can project on a piece of paper that an outcome is going to look like and the reality of the behavior of the individual and retiree, how they're going to behave in those circumstances. And they don't match up. We know that they know that, but they can give you a sheet of paper that says, this is going to work if you follow this. Most people don't follow it. So this is why we teach this class. This is why we started teaching this class 10 years ago. These unexpected retirements, these traps that our industry is setting you up for failure is why we teach a seven-hour course. It's seven hours. We're going through a 200-page textbook. We're going to teach you about taxes, income planning, the sequence of when you should take money out of which accounts, when you should be calculating to take your Social Security. You're going to know how to construct your own customized retirement plan. It's a $29 donation to the charity. Gets you in attendance of this seven-hour course. We are streaming them live right now. You don't have to go to all the universities. You can stream it from your home. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. We're back with Kirk and Michael right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. They're on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, make sure you give them a follow. Just search Retirement Education Foundation. We're talking about how retirement, retirement planning, boy, it's changed. This changing landscape, evolving landscape, it means a lot to us. So it's important to pay attention. And Kirk and Michael, they're showing us just how the retirement planning industry has shifted. And it could mean success or failure, to be quite honest, with your retirement future. Kirk and and Michael, is it hard sometimes to convince people? Are we, (laughs) as a group, are we kind of stuck in our ways? We are, the challenge is we are fighting an industry that has conditioned you your whole lives, right? Think about, watch, if you watch Fox News and CNN talk about COVID right now, each one of them will bring in their physicians that will tell you, talk about the same topic, but will tell you totally two different things. And 
so, both with their doctors, both with their science, both with their facts, right, and both saying the other one's wrong, right? And that's – so we are all conditioned by where we consume and who we consume our information from, and we tend to because we all want to be right in our beliefs. It's something called confirmation bias. We're going to gravitate to the people that have a similar belief system than us. So imagine we have an industry that knows that if they can create a bias – in your own personality, they can make it very difficult for you to pivot or change from that bias. And they've spent your whole life talking to you about, we've got the best mutual fund, we've got a secret sauce, we've got a secret algorithm, uh, something special that can get you the best outcomes. It's all about the long-term growth of your money. Never, ever talking about particularly for retirees, what really drives success in retirement, which is the income planning. It's when you take money from which accounts at what age is what's going to drive the performance, not the investments. But our industry is the investments. It's That's where all the money's made is in managing the money with these mutual funds that candidly, and we've been talking about this forever, you probably shouldn't own these mutual funds. You should own an index fund. You should own ETFs, the index. You don't stock picking mutual funds they don't win right but but this is they've conditioned you to believe these these general rules these old rules it helps to maintain their business model to be most profitable and to change someone's mind after being conditioned their whole life into these beliefs is very very difficult it's not an accident our courses are seven hours it's seven hours showing them the facts, the data. In fact, the first part of the class is to show you where the traps and problems are and why they're a problem. The second half is all the solutions, the tax planning, the income planning, the estate planning, the planning for the surviving spouse. It's complicated. Complicated requires time for us. We're experts. We've been doing this. We have combined hundreds of years of experience in our team, right? I mean, tons of experience, CPAs, attorneys, CFAs, CFPs, we've got them all, right? And it still takes us 20 to 50 hours to construct a plan for an individual in our private practice. That's why we spend seven hours in our course to try to teach people on how to do this so they can construct their own custom plan for their situation. All of your situations are unique and different. Every one of you, some of you have more money in pre-tax retirement accounts. Some have non after tax money, some have Roth money, some have a pension, some have one spouse that worked or both spouses that worked, some are single, some have five years age difference, 10 years age difference. Some are going to retire in the next two years, five years, 10 years, or already retired. Some are starting RMDs or still have many years before. All of these variables create a different plan, different outcome. That doesn't work for our industry, does it, Michael? It doesn't. <laughs> All those different variables, and for the past who knows how many years, they've been trying to address these variables with one rule of thumb, 60-40 yeah. portfolio. It has, which is, historically, it's worked out pretty well, honestly. It has- It's worked out from a performance perspective well. Correct. But for not for a retirement income planning, but go ahead, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Correct. In the past 50 years, there's been one five-year period where the 60-40 portfolio has had a negative return over five years, which has been great. So these firms can use this rule of thumb. That they don't really care about the different variables. This 60-40 has been good enough to get them by with people, but that's not the case anymore. So, so Michael, so it's not the case anymore, A, but B, it's all about what they can illustrate on a paper, not the practical outcomes, not the real outcomes. What can they illustrate back-tested, right? Look at, look at what it's done. Yeah, but, but no one stays the course. Everyone panics and changes and pivots and finds the next best investment or idea, and somehow it all blows up. And even with that back-test, I mean, their back-test – According to them, anything in their Monte Carlo scenario, anything at a 60% probability of success or better is in their green zone. It's good enough. So, Michael, please explain that because I know you've done a lot of research recently on this for our classes where you've gone to all the different firms and went through their, their retirement planning exercise. What did you find? So, a lot of different brokerage firms are now offering retirement plans, and I've put that in air quotes. You put in some very basic information, how much money you have now, when you want to retire, how much money you want when you're retired. They run their, their algorithms, and they spit out a probability of success. Now, as long as that probability is 60% or higher, they give you a green check mark. You're good to go. That means you could have a 40% chance of failure, and they consider that good enough. That's a really huge, huge issue for retirees. And here's why. Look, Morgan Stanley, the same firm that will tell you to do this strategy, 
has just projected over the next 10 years the return on a 60-40 allocation, the 60-40 portfolio will only perform, it'll perform less than 3%. I think it was 2.9%. 2.8, yes. 2.8. So the projection over the next 10 years on the a 60-40 portfolio is going to perform less than 3%, and people are going to take out 4%. That, so less than 3%, that's barely ahead of inflation and certainly will not cover a 4% withdrawal rate. No, we're coming off the lo- greatest expansion in the history of, of the stock market, right? We're at the all-time highs or really close to all-time highs. This is like the perfect storm for baby boomers who are retiring 10000 per day. Three million been forced out since the beginning of COVID because of the COVID virus. Three million baby boomers, right? So uh, it's a perfect storm, and so now their solution, and let's come back next segment and talk about the solution. The solution is a 70, take more risk. Take more <laughs> risk is their solution So because it pencils well, right? Please, please, it's an, we're a nonprofit organization that's teaching these courses. Come to this class. It's seven hours. I'm going to tell you, these are highly, people who attend these courses are a lot of the faculty, CPAs, CFOs executive engineers, mostly do-it-yourselfers who are attending this course. We go through seven hours, 200-page textbook. It's the best $29 donation you'll ever make. If you'd like to register, we're streaming it live so you can stay in your home, or you can go to any of the universities if you want and see it there. You can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 1-800-240-8981. We're back with much more right here on the Retirement Education Hour. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. Now, if you'd like to get registered for one of their upcoming courses, and these are taught around our community at local universities, also taught virtually in the comfort of your own home, you can attend. So, To get registered, all you have to do is call 800-240-8981. If you'd rather register online, you can do that as well. Retirementplanningedu.com. And follow Kirk and Michael on Facebook. Just search Retirement Education Foundation. We've been talking about the changing landscape of retirement planning. And there are some things that have changed, specifically in the industry. So Kirk and Paul, these new rules of thumb why are these being promoted? What's the real reason? Megan, they're doing this because really there's no really easy answer. What is easy is they can change the profile of how much stocks versus bonds, and it's going to then illustrate when they back test it better going for, for future um, income planning. It just illustrates better, but we're not factoring all the variables of how much volatility? Look, so the, the, the biggest risk to income planning is taking money out of a portfolio that is down. So if your account is down, the investments are down, and you are taking money out monthly, quarterly, however you are taking money out of those investments to live on, that is the number one risk. And if the portfolios are going down in the first five years just a little bit, and you're pulling money out of it, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. So the, the, the answer is, why are they doing it? Well, there's no simple answer to what we have. We have stock prices is it, it really, really expensive, right? Especially tech, where all the growth is. Very, the valuations are very high, frothy. It's expensive. We have bonds over the next 20 years. Let's talk about bonds, Michael, because over the next 20, we have bonds right now returning 10-year treasuries returning a real negative return. I mean, you're losing money if you lend money to the U.S. government for 10 years right now. And all these strategies, every retirement plan has 40% in bonds or 25% in bonds, whatever it is. Yes, you may have a reduce, you might reduce volatility, but you're going to get no performance. That's why they're doing this, right, Michael? Right. So they're shifting their 40% allocation to the bonds to down to 25%. So there's less dead weight in the portfolio. They're trying to juice returns, but they're also taking more risk. And like we said, a 75-25 portfolio, if, if we have a 2008 event where the market goes down 50-55%, a 75-25 portfolio will lose 45%. Michael, I don't care if it goes down 10%, which we've seen that portfolio, that allocation portfolio go down 10% in one day. We've seen that this year in one day. So 
it's not even how much it goes down. The fact that it is how – so when you're doing an allocation, if you're just leaving the money alone and not touching it for many years, you're fine. I'm, I'm okay with the 75-25 allocation. But if you're going to need to live off that money, take distributions out of that portfolio, how are you going to do that? What happens when the portfolio is down? How are you going to take money out of that? Because that is how you outlive your money. That is the number one risk to every retiree. Everyone Google sequence of return risk. This is the number one risk. And I'll say another thing, Michael, I'll, to quote Warren Buffett, you have to be insane to risk something you have for something you don't need. So they're promoting more risk. A lot of times people don't need more risk. They need an income plan to see what they need. How about we plan based upon your needs, not a playbook because it's simple. I think the bottom line is we agree. And finally, something we've been teaching and saying for four years now is that the next 20 years in bonds you can't you can't make you don't own bond funds over the next 20 years don't please just you're not going to make money if you're going to own bonds you better have someone who's a professional who's buying individual bonds managing maturities duration managing risk i know that's wonky it's a little technical but i'm telling you the old conventional just buy a bond fund for a retirement plan is is dead that is dead when interest rates go up, your bond fund portfolio values are going to go down. As interest rates rise, the bond fund you own is going to go down. It's going to lose money. That's why Morgan Stanley says a 60% equity, 40% bond portfolio is going to only perform, perform at 2.8% over the next 10 years. That can't be your answer. And my challenge with what the industry, our challenge, I think, with the industry is their pivot was take have seniors take more risk when the market's at an all-time high. That's insanity. How about doing an income plan? How about someone stopping, instead of just doing a spreadsheet of taking out 4% a year, how about mapping it out so that you make sure you're taking in from income from accounts that don't have volatility? So make sure your income is coming out of an account that doesn't have swings up and down volatilities? How about that? And it's scary because we talk to people all the time who say, oh, I weathered through 2008. Fine. I didn't who sell. Who cares? You were working then. You were not retiring then. You were not paying yourself yet. Someone else is paying you. It's a different ball game when you start paying yourself. People don't, they flip out when we show in the class how you can have an average 10% rate of return. You put a million dollars in a portfolio for 20 years and you get a 10% rate of return. You have over $5 million 20 years, uh, 20 years later. That same portfolio, a million dollars, having an average rate of return of 10%. But this time, now you're going to take out 5% a year to live on? I'll show you how your portfolio goes to zero, runs out of money in 17 years. It depends on the sequence of returns, hence the sequence of return risk, which is something that our industry does not like to talk about because it's difficult to address with a one-size-fits-all solution. Exactly. And it's what we, we stress. We spend so much time talking about this in the class because this goes back to the question Megan asked earlier. Is it difficult to convince people that are set in their ways on how to approach this, right? Because they've been told this, taught this, read this, the Susie Ormans, the Dave Ramseys, everyone in the world is promoting this simple solution so they can be most profitable. And so it takes us some time to show and run through example after example after example after example where people have average rates of return 7% over 10 years and you lost money, 10% over 20 years and you run out of money in in 17 years so all these example finally people realize it's where and when you take income from which accounts at what age that's going to determine whether you outlive your money or not this is a much more complicated game than some simple solution the investment parts are the easiest part of retirement planning i'm telling you it's the easiest thing we do and we we're responsible for over a billion dollars in our private practice it's the easiest part of what we do it's the plan. And that's what we teach in our seven-hour courses at all the major universities. Make a $29 donation to charity. It's the best $29 donation you'll ever make. And you get a seven-hour course at all the major universities, or you can sit in your home, and we will stream it to you live from the universities. You'll get a 200-page textbook, and you will be better prepared for retirement. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, Retirement Planning edu.com or call 800-240-8981. Much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. 
Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy, Michael Mazarin. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation, and you're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. If you're on Facebook, I want to encourage you, make sure to follow Kirk and Michael. You can search Retirement Education Foundation. That way you're up to speed on everything they're doing to help people right here in our community get ready for retirement. Get that confidence that you need, that you've got a plan and you're ready to go. If you'd like to attend one of their courses, and these are held all year long, you can find a date, a location that works for you, maybe a a virtual course. You can do that by going to the website, retirementplanningedu.com, or call the number to register, 800-240-8981. We've spent the show today talking about the retirement landscape that's now changing, evolving, and what that means for you, why you have to know how some things have shifted so that you can have a successful retirement. So Kirk and Michael, let's talk, let's review just a little bit some of the main retirement planning industry things that have changed that could spell trouble to people if they're not aware. Well, it's it's that bonds, the shift to bonds is going to reduce your volatility in the solution in retirement. That That isn't the case. The 60-40 playbook is dead. Our industry has come up with a solution that you should take more risk. So go 75% stocks, 25% bonds in retirement as a solution. That isn't going to work because of sequence of return risk. The sequence of when we take money out of what account, the conventional wisdom, it's just wrong. It's They'll tell you not to take money out of your IRAs and your 401ks until you have to, until last and for most people, that's just wrong. The so the calculator for Social Security on when and how to take that income, that calculator is wrong. It's only one variable of four. Really, taxes. How does Social Security impact the taxes on your IRAs, your 401ks, your pensions, your Roth? All of those is what's going to contribute to deciding when and how to take your Social Security. So essentially, all these one-size-fits-all rules are wrong. I mean, they're really harmful for the two thirds of Americans who have saved resources for retirement and are going to live a retirement where they can maintain a somewhat similar lifestyle. It's just not the most effective path. We can get so much more juice. We can get so much more income out of our plans if it is customized to the individual. Therefore, they have a more enjoyable retirement. And Michael, it starts with education. It's why we started this, the Retirement Education Foundation for Financial Literacy over 10 years ago now. Education. You've got one chance at this. One chance. There's no do-overs. If you make a mistake at 75 years old, you can't save more money or go back to You have one try. You are going to be your own employer, your own bank for the rest of your life. You cannot make a mistake in the idea that you're going to do this yourself without a custom solution for the first time in your life, is insane. I know if you had to have surgery tomorrow, Michael, you wouldn't go to the surgeon that's only done it one time. You'll go to the surgeon that's done it thousands of times, right? That's what we've touched in the past earlier on the fear of retirement, the fear of the unknown, essentially. People have saved this pot of money and they don't know how much can I afford to live on. What if I want to leave legacy to heirs or charities or somebody else? Surviving gone, spouse. Surviving spouses. I don't, people, it's, it's insane to me that people are going to trust a Monte Carlo scenario that projects a 60% chance of success, that's a little bit better than a coin flip. And therefore, as a result, most retirees shut down. Most retirees will decide whether they're going on vacation, whether they're going to retire, whether they're going to do their home improvement. They're going to decide short-term goals, things that they want to do based upon short-term market events. Who's being, who's, who's being elected? Who's being impeached? Right? Who, are we in a recession? Well, then I better not go on vacation. Uh, we're in a re- you're going to have a recession every, what, seven years on average? So we're not going to go on vacation? Like, how big is your window in retirement? How long are you going to stay healthy? Trust me, you don't know. It could be really small, or it could be 30, 40 years. The number of people we have dying in their 60s, unfortunately, in our private practice, it's a lot this year. We just don't know. So to allow short-term market events to drive your uh, happiness and what you do in retirement is insane. But because of these conventional wisdoms, People shut down. They're fearful. They don't feel in control. They don't feel empowered. They don't have that freedom. Michael, part of the problem is people, especially baby boomers, going into retirement, 71% of baby boomers 
think of themselves as having high financial knowledge, good financial knowledge. But Market Watch just did a, a study and asked three basic elementary financial questions, very elementary questions, and 34% of adults failed. 34% failed three basic. People always overestimate their knowledge, particularly when it comes to finance. It's kind of their, especially for men, it's, it, it's our ego. We know, we know. We, you really, you have no idea about retirement. I'm telling you, I don't care the books you read. I'm telling you, you don't understand the emotional variables that are involved along with where all the traps are, not just for you, but your surviving spouse and what happens when one of you predeceased out. There's so many variables. I know I'm pretty amped up right now. It's because I'm really passionate about this and it's why, you know, we started that nonprofit organization. Well, at, at that point of life too, um, if you make a mistake, it's too late. There are no do-overs. Once you're 60, 65, if you make a mistake and you're, uh, you're invested too aggressively and the market gets volatile and you panic and sell, you've just made a lifelong mistake for yourself. I love this one too, Michael. I'm going to determine when I retire. So I'm going to work six more years or four more years. Sure you are. Unexpected retirements are more common than people who actually can plan their retirement because of recession, because of health, because of pandemics. We're experiencing it right now. Three million and growing rapidly baby boomers being forced out of the workforce, most of them won't get a job. Age discrimination exists, right? So take this time right now, wherever you're at in your life, to educate yourself by attending one of our seven-hour courses at all the major universities. We teach them at all of them locally, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State University, the Novi Campus, Oakland University. We're also streaming these classes live to you in your home because of COVID. It's a $29 donation. It's, it will be valuable to you to take this seven-hour course. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. All matters discussed during this show are for informational purposes only. Opinions expressed are solely those of senior planning advisors and staff. All topics covered are believed to be from reliable sources. However, senior planning advisors makes no representations as to its accuracy or completeness. This shall in no way be construed as a solicitation to sell securities or investment advisory services to residents of any state other than Michigan or where otherwise permitted. Topics should be discussed with your individual advisor prior to implementation. Fee-based financial planning and investment advisory services offered through Strategic Investment Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Strategic Investment Advisors and Senior Planning Advisors are affiliated companies. This radio show is a paid placement.